بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah Inshallah Ta'ala For today's reminder We want to highlight and look at the fact that It is a must that we take advantage of this Ramadan and in general we take advantage of our life of our lives because there's not a single one from amongst us except that death will come to them and yesterday's reminder at the conclusion of it we looked at some lines of poetry that we would like to look at again bithnillahi ta'ala with the focus in on our mortality the poet he mentioned ya dhal ladhi ma kafahu dhunubu fi rajib hatta asa rabbahu fi shahr sha'bani laqad adhallaka shahr as-sawm ba'dahuma فلا تصيره أيضا شهر عصيان واتل القرآن وسبح فيه مشتهدا فإنه شهر تسبيح وقرآن كم كنت تعرف ممن صار في سلف من بين أهل من بين أهل وجيران وإخوان أفناهم الموت واستبقاك بعدهم حيا فما أقرب القاصي من داني. These lines, what translated means is that, O oh you who did not stop from doing evil inside of Rajab, O oh you who did not stop from doing evil inside the month of, of Rajab. All the way until you continue to disobey your Lord inside the month of Sha'ban. The month of Sha'ban, which comes after Rajab. He says, And verily, there has enveloped you the month of fasting that comes after them too. So do not make this as well a month of transgression and sin. Therefore, recite the Quran. And recite the Quran and praise Allah therein a lot vigorously because verily this is the month of praising Allah and of the Quran. How many people do you know that have fasted from before you? Whether they have been from your families or from your neighbors or from your brothers in general. Death has come and destroyed them and thus you remain after them alive. فَمَا أَقْرَبُ الْقَاصِي مِنْ دَانِي And how close is the one that is uh, يعني, meaning and we don't know which one of us is nearer to death or which one of us is further away from it. None of us knows who is closer to it and who is further away from it. There are many who are young and they die before the old. And there are those who are old and they die before others who are younger than them. So death will come to us and none of us knows to which one of them death is more near. And this is the reality. Is that we have to take advantage of what's left of our lives. Because none of us knows when our life is going to end. But we know with a certainty that our life will come to an end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside of his noble book, he says, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ 
that every soul will taste death. Every soul will taste death. We all are going to die. Our time is limited. We are all going to die. And if we truly want to be successful, then we have to pay very close attention to what's mentioned here in this ayah. Because individuals in the dunya, if they want success, or those who value and measure success in worldly terms, then it will be dependent upon the level of education one may receive and or the position and the job one may uh, gain or the type of house that one may acquire or the type of vehicle that one may acquire or the type of uh, material things that one may amass and so on and so forth and this is one who is successful now to those who view success in the and the in the terms of the the dunya the takeaway from this is that those measures of success in worldly terms they require work they require effort so if an individual were to reach uh, a degree and a particular level of study in a disciplinary study it will require from them effort they will have to put forth effort in studying they will have to put forth effort in taking the proper classes and the proper courses they will have to put forth effort and lose sleep to work hard to study for their tests and for their exams to do research you know to do lab time so on and so forth they will have to put forth effort and put forth work in order to accomplish uh, that particular profession that particular skill to get the degree in that particular discipline they will have to put forth effort likewise to get a particular job they will have to put forth effort the effort from the type of educational background that is needed for that job and expertise uh, whatever certifications may be required for a particular job they may have to take internships right um, to gain experience and so on and so forth so on and so forth from these various things you know start at one level then they get promoted to another level or go to another job and so on and so forth build their resume the point is is that they have to put forth work to get to that position that they were looking for likewise when it comes to the house when it comes to the uh the riding vehicle when it comes to the worldly things that they will amass they have to work right and hence the word work to uh to 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 earn money in order to buy these things and to afford to pay for these things so the point is is that they have to put forth work for the worldly affairs now this dunya is exactly that it's the dunya it is that which is low it is that which is less than now i mean that's why it's called dunya because it's low it's the lowly life is that which is less than is less than the real the real life but to attain things in the in the lowly life you have to put forth what work now so when it comes to the real life then be like shak will be like right but person has to put forth what work now the person has to put forth work so what is the real measure of success the real measure of success is as Allah Ta'ala he explains here inside of this ayah Allah Ta'ala he says kullu nafsin da'iqatul maut that every soul will taste death wa innama tuwaffawna ujurakum yawma al-qiyamah every soul shall taste death and on only on the day of judgment shall you be paid your wages in full only on the day of judgment shall you be paid your wages in full only on uh, the day of judgment shall you be paid your wages in full فمن زحيها عن النار وادخل الجنه فقد فاز so whoever they are saved from the fire and they enter into the jannah then these are the ones who are going to be successful see the true measure of success is that you get safe from the fire and you enter into the jannah that is your true level of success but that will require from you what much work much effort to uh be safe from the fire and enter into the jannah and this is why ramadan is essential why because ramadan is one of those time frames that it gives you an opportunity to put forth that work to put forth that righteous good deeds to save you from the hell fire and so that you can enter into jannah so we have to take advantage of this ramadan and allah ta'ala he ends the ayah by saying wa man hayatud dunya illa mata'ul ghurur 
and the life of this world is only the enjoyment of deception, a deceiving thing. It's a fleeting uh, 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 thing. It's a deception. It's not real. It's not the real. It's not the real life. Now, I mean, that's the only thing that this life of this world is. So don't let the life of this world distract you from that which is real, from that which is the true success in the akhirah. Don't let the life of this world prevent you from benefiting from that which will really benefit you. So utilize this Ramadan, utilize this Ramadan to become truly successful. Utilize this Ramadan to become truly successful. And a true success is the one who is successful in the hereafter, the one who is safe from having to go to hell and the one who is entered into the Jannah. This is the reminder I wanted to give myself and to give all of you to take advantage of what is left of Ramadan, take advantage of what is left of your life to become truly and really successful, ultimately successful. So use Ramadan to become truly successful. هذا فنكتفي بهذا القدر والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا